Hey! Hey! This is a Land Rover Defender car tour. Uh, we will be doing the whole car outside and inside and I'll get into that very soon. We are Nick and Mathilde and we left everything behind a bit more than a year ago to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender Albatross. Uh, it's our house on wheels. We're going to do the seven continents, 88 countries for three or four years visit. So it's really our house on wheels. Yeah. And we've kitted everything three years prior to a trip to make sure everything was perfect. We tested it in Iceland. We like the setup for our type of tra travel. For sure, everyone has a different style and a different comfort level. For us, it's great. There are a few things we change, but that's about it. Um, okay, today what we will talk about is the engine area. We will talk about all of the setup exterior and all of the interior setup. And it's now been a year and a half that we're traveling and so far everything is great. We're super happy with the setup. So today I'm going to be the one filming and he's going to be the one talking. Let's go! So before we start, this is a Defender 2012. It's a Puma 2.2 liter engine. It's 110 in terms of the length, five doors. The car has 180,000 kilometers. We've done about 60,000 kilometers since the start of the trip a year and four months ago. Okay, let's jump right into it. We'll start with the front. Uh, as you can notice, there is no roof rack on our car, which is called Albatross. Um, but we do have instead this bag. In this bag, we have all the camping gear. So that means camping chairs, sleeping bag, uh, extra sleeping mattress, snorkel gear, and a few little extra things. Honestly, in a year and a half through Europe, North America, Central America, and now in South America, nobody has ever touched it. And we've always left it here. So pretty sweet. It's waterproof and sandproof, so it's great. Uh, so that's what we have here. This is for the AC unit, for the air unit. Uh, we upgraded it here with a filter. The idea is because when it rains or it snows, it clogs up the air. So this system here, makes the air intake come from below. And secondly, there's a filter. So when you're turning on the AC in dusty roads, you're not getting blown with dust. And so this filter helps. Um, we did change the lights. These are all LED lights uh, from Vision X. The same for the three lights here. So this one shoots forward. These two shoot on the side. The idea is because in Sweden, we couldn't see the deers coming. So we installed these. We barely ever use these because we don't drive at night, but they're there if needed. We do have a plexiglass protection. The lights are already plexiglass, uh, they're not glass. So they're already pretty well protected, but just as an extra precaution, we installed these when rocks and pebbles are coming from other vehicles. So, so far so good. A winch, uh, I think it's a 9.5 ton, 9,500 kilogram weight winch. So it's pretty strong. We haven't used it much. Uh, we mostly pulled other cars out, but we did pull ourselves once out in Belgium. Bumper. We have a small bumper. The idea is just to not have too much weight. So instead of having a bumper that covers the whole car, it just covers the bottom, which is good enough. We've never hit anything, fingers crossed, so we're fine for now. Um, what else is here? The shovel. So this shovel, we mostly use it for bathroom breaks. Uh, it has helped us in situations where we were parked in the sand or we needed to dig a hole to park the car, to level the car when camping, but it's mostly for bathroom. We did forget to say one thing, there's a skid plate here, just as protection for the, for the rocks we may hit. Um, in between the front and rear axles, there's also a cover on the, on the big ball, let's say, so as a protection from any debris we hit. We hit. And that's about it. Here in terms of suspensions, we have uh, reinforced suspensions front and at the back we have an inner coil, which I'll show you, and the Kony Raid uh, shocks, which work perfectly well. We're extremely happy with them. Now coming to the side, uh, BF Goodrich tires. We love the BF Goodrich tires. Usually what we do is in Europe, North America, probably just those two continents, uh, we use 235s, 85 I believe, uh, 16 rims. And when we're in Central, South America, Australia, Africa and Asia, so all the rest, we use the 265, 75, 16 rims. Uh, the idea is just to have a bit more 
traction in those type of terrains. But in Europe, the thinner tires are perfectly fine and they consume less. So right now we're on the 265s and they work perfectly. We haven't actually punctured any tires at all since, uh, since the beginning of the trip. Coming to this side of the vehicle, awning. So this is a 90 degree awning. It just comes out straight and goes back in. It would be amazing to have the 270, but we do not have it. So this is what we have for now. We don't use the awning much. Uh, it's actually, if somebody asked us what would be the most useless equipment you have, I'd probably say the awning. It might one day change, but for now, at least a 90 degree awning is really not that useful. If you have the 270, maybe it's better. And on this side, we have these extended mirrors from Rough Parts, a Swiss company. The idea is because of the jerry cans that you can see back here, we have a switching mirror. So we're on the highway. We can now see past the jerry cans. We don't use them much, but when we do, they're very useful. Coming on this side here, all the flags. Ecuador is where we are now, where we're filming this video for you here at the beach. And uh, Ecuador is country 22. We still have 66 countries to go. So it's pretty long, still two, three years to go. Um, on this side, so this is a water jerry can. We actually never use it, 20 liter. This is a diesel jerry can. It's practically always full, 20 liters. And here it's all the recovery gear. So it's just a, a Pelican waterproof bag, case, okay, sorry. And uh, just recovery gear with straps, shackles, things like that in case we get stuck in quick access. Because if they're inside the car and you're stuck, usually it's muddy or sandy or rainy. And you're just, you know, bringing all the mud inside. So here in quick access, you just pull everything out and make it, make it go. Then we have this exterior box. This box here is actually because in Europe, at least in Europe, I'm sure in other continents too, you need to keep the gas bottle separate from the living area. But we don't have gas, we have uh, fuel for cooking, which we'll show you later. But this is where we keep instead then all of our cooking utensils. So the pans, uh, the plates, pots, and little jet boil. So everything keeps in here, pretty quick access. Now, the springs that I was talking to you about, so if we come here and look down, so what you can see is that there is a spring inside the exterior spring. So it's a double spring. And that is and that is how the Defender 130s are. So we have a Defender 110, but it has the double springs uh, for the extra weight, perfectly functional. And at the, as well at the back, we have the Coney Raid uh, shocks. They work perfect. We did make a video on the Coney shocks and how to set them up, set them up as you can uh, put the pressure yourself. So you might as well jump onto that other video if you want to install them. But this is the car tour video. Coming towards the back, this is where we have our shower input. Um, so we have a hose that goes in and on the other side of the vehicle, we have the shower tent, which fits in here. So this is a European brand called Vicky Wood from Germany. And so this would open up like that and we would be covered in four walls of tent, shower completely in privacy, and then step out into the car. So this is very useful, especially on the road because it's quick access, but especially it, it just takes two seconds and then you're covered. Um, now looking at this exterior part, this is also from Rough Parts of Swiss company, exterior table to cook on. For me, it's the perfect height, but still is a little bit low, but they do have an option to bring it a bit lower. Um, on this side of the wall, we actually put all the stickers of the travelers we meet. And on this side is companies that have helped us out during the trip. But so this is our exterior table. And on the other side, the max tracks. So these are the sand ladders for when we get stuck in the, in the sand. We've actually used them in Colombia when we got stuck in, in the Salina, which is the salt lake. And the car literally just bottomed onto the sand. And with these two, we pulled them out. So we only have two. A lot of people have four. For us two is fine for now, so we'll stay at two. But if we need it, there is more space to fit two more. Uh, and these, you lock them so that you know, nobody can steal them while you're away. And it's a pretty easy system because you just have to spin it like that, like that, and then you pull them out. Okay, uh, coming on this side of the vehicle, we have air vents that goes with the windows. 
Uh, this one we got it from Mud Stuff UK. Uh, they actually have tons of great gear. And this is perfect just to let some air flow during the night. Uh, while we're driving, we leave them as well, unless we're on dusty roads. So this is very uh, helpful. All right, and then we move on to the Cyclonic uh, Snorkel. We like the Cyclonic Snorkel just because the air gets filtered in here and the dust just remains on this part of the rim. And then I just have to remove it, empty it, reset it. The forward facing, rear facing snorkels are perfect too. I just think these ones remove more uh, air pollution from getting into your air filter and then into the engine. This one works really well. You can see now we have a pop-up roof. Uh, the idea for this trip is to be able to stand inside in case it was raining or in case we just wanted to be indoors of the vehicle without being crouched down into a uh, 4x4. So the pop-up proof, on the roof you might see a solar panel. So we got this solar panel from Sunware, a German company. It's a 100 watt solar panel. Uh, we drive practically every day, so we don't technically need so much power on the roof, but we do have a second panel inside plug and play that we could put in the sun while we're parked, and that's an extra 100 watts. So far, this has been sufficient for us, but I know that a lot of travel vehicles who stop more than a day in one location without moving probably need at least four to 600 watts. For us, 200 watts is enough. Now moving on to the back. This side here, we have the high lift. A normal lift will lift the car about this much to be able to change your tires. This is called a high lift. It lifts the car about that much. The idea is that when the car is stuck, let's say one tire is really stuck in, you can lift the car up to a meter, more or less. Slide rocks or trunks or wood below that tire. It will re-level the vehicle and then you can go. It can also be used as a winch. We actually never use this, ever. We know how to use it, but it has never come in handy. So I don't know if it's an important piece of kit for overlanding, maybe 4x4 weekends. Um, this bag, very useful. We keep our dirty clothes here. We keep our trash here extra oils and a few like our cleanable sink so for example the sink here that folds uh, and a lot of oils and a few extras so this is pretty good nobody again just like the bag in the front has touched this nothing has gone missing through all the countries we've been through very useful below behind this tire we actually have a front runner uh, barbecue which we've used quite a lot in Mexico and a bit in the US. Uh, but apart from that, we haven't met many travelers since, so we haven't used it much, but barbecue in case of need. Here we also have these two Vision X lights. Honestly, one is sufficient. I would say this side, because when you open the door, technically this is the one you need to see stuff. That one sort of just becomes ignorant. So. These are the lights for when we're reversing or at nighttime just to be able to see what's happening around. Now we have a rear view camera, which is actually right in here. Uh, so this one is actually filming backwards. Uh, it's a dash cam, but it also helps us for when we're reversing. So that's a rear view. Finally on the rear, the only thing we have left is our world map. We put it here. It just makes it easier for when uh, people come to us and say, what are you doing? What's next Marine Expedition? Are you guys a company? And we say, no, this is what we're doing, a whole world. And uh, it's much easier to explain visually. Okay, now moving back to this side. So if I open this door, defenders don't usually have nets on the doors, so we installed nets. This is where our shower hose is. Here are another 20 liter jerry can lifesaver. So this can filter water from rivers. And then here a 10 liter uh, jerry can. The dual ARB air compressor with its uh, pipes. And behind is the fire extinguisher. So we've already had to pull it out once in Canada, thinking that the car was on fire. And literally it takes two seconds because as I pick up the filter, I just push everything out and I have the filter quickly, uh, the filter, fire extinguisher quickly, so that location is fine. Now looking down here, this is actually a 65 liter water tank and these two hoses are heat exchangers. Heat exchangers are a free way to heat up your water uh, for showers. So this is actually our 
water for the shower and the sink up there and to clean our dishes you need this we're filling up our foldable uh, bucket now in total just to have an idea we have 65 liter of uh, non-drinkable water but more for showers and cleaning and then we have 30 liters of drinkable water plus an extra 20 if needed so 65 plus 50 of drinkable in terms of diesel, there's the original tank, which is 75 liters, plus uh, auxiliary tank of 45. So that brings us to 120. And then we have an extra 20 here, so 140, which brings us to about 1,100 kilometers of, uh, of travel. In terms of the water, it can last us a week for drinkable and shower water, except when we're at the beach, it lasts us two days because of the salt you keep rinsing yourself. So I think 65 liters is good and this jerry can we've actually never used it. 30 liters of water is totally fine. So if you're doing an overlanding trip, you'll be okay. Uh, I have no idea for the other continents like Asia or Africa we, or Australia we haven't tested yet. So we might use it, but for now 30 liters of water has been definitely enough. Okay, now let's go check out the other door. Now, technically, the only access brought to the car is from the back door. The two back doors are sealed. We removed all the rear seats. And um, this is a cabinet that was uh, custom built for the vehicle. In here, we actually have all the electrical outlets. So the 220 volts. Uh, usually up here, we have the computers charging. And below here are the drones. So here we have a drone and a camera for all the filming. All of this is secured in here uh, and at night time when we're sleeping we just put the suctions so that nobody can see inside that's about it in here behind the passenger seat we actually put it, the coleman uh, the coleman stoves is a double stove that is used for uh, for cooking and we will show it to you next very soon that's about it so i'm gonna open this and then I'll put the stove up here. Okay, so this is the Coleman. It's just a green bag, suitcase looking almost. You open it up, and in here, there is a little fire and a starter. So technically, okay, so technically, once it's set up, it looks like this. It's got little wind breakers on both sides and a double stove what's great is that it uses gasoline so fuel and when we fill up the diesel tank of the albatross we then also fill up this thing with fuel it usually lasts us 10 cooking uh, times in terms of frequency to refill this tank maybe a bit less maybe eight and to refill this only costs us a dollar fifty or a euro so it's actually very cheap compared to the gas bottles that you have and then you have to refill. Now the other system that there is is also uh, gas. Uh, so you can have the big gas containers and bring those around, but the valves are always different in uh, different continents and it's not always easy to find a refill point. We personally think this is the easiest solution. The only difference that's negative is that it smokes a bit because it's fuel. So sometimes it smokes and it might you know, make your pan a little black. So when you're cleaning, it's a bit more annoying, but that's the only negative. The positives I think are, are great, but anybody can travel as they wish. So that's our solution. Now going to the front, this is what the front setup looks like. I'll go the other side. Okay, hello. Uh, central console, which is called a QB box in Defenders. Here we just put random storages like wallets and whatnot. Here is our um, VHF radio. We actually never use it because we instead use the channel radio, uh, which works perfectly well. Um, in the fenders, because of the, this is our bed, so we have this little magnetic light. That's perfectly fine. A curtain, so at night when we close this part, that window is closed and the front is closed and nobody can look inside, so the privacy is it there here's our diesel heater uh, exhaust so diesel heater is when you turn off your vehicle and you 
you're in Alaska or somewhere in Norway or a very cold country, you can turn this on uh, via this console here. So this can turn on the level of the heat and it acts like a heater. And uh, it takes the diesel directly from the vehicle's diesel tank. And so you can leave it on all night, set up the temperature and all night it will just function. So this is perfect in cold weather. So you're actually t-shirts and shorts inside while everyone, while everything outside is frozen. Um, next to it here, we have the inverter, the power inverter. So 220 volt, which uh, you saw in that cabinet, in that drawer. So this is where the power comes from. And here we have a T-Max console to see the charge of the batteries. Uh, we have one AGM battery for the car, uh, the winch and the compressor and everything else. So the fridge, the power, all the lights, whatnot, are all connected to the auxiliary, which is a lithium 90 ampere uh, uh, battery. Both batteries and the fenders are under the seat. So both batteries fit here. That's the only two we have. And looking now just here, this is the fridge, which we will see better when we go from, uh, from the back, but our fridge is right here. So everything is quick access. This little bar here, it's a pretty simple idea. It's one of those compressing bars. So we put it up here with a curtain and that's how easy it is. Looking up here, so we have two consoles. Um, this one is a rear view camera uh, because of our setup, we can't actually see anything. So we, ha we put a rear view camera, which actually acts like a dash cam filming back and forward. You can see here is the camera in the front. Uh, this is from Wolfbox. You can actually get it on Amazon. Very, very useful. The second co console is a tire pressure measuring system, so TPMS. This here actually gives you the tire pressures. This one says zero, so the rear right says zero. Uh, the reason why is because I pulled it out so you can see what it looks like. Um, so this is what it is. It says rear right. In here, there's actually a battery, as you can see. So this battery goes in there. And then this is the valve that you put on the tire. And with Bluetooth, it just uh, it just tells you the pressure. So in case you get a tire puncture one day or uh, a tire pressure loss, you will see it. And if it goes below a certain number that you can set, it will start beeping. So the idea is that you don't have to worry too much about your tires, just check this out. Uh, and this is solar panel charge. So on the other side of this TPMS, there's a little solar panel. In front here, not much. We just added this uh, RAM grip for our phones. We do also use this magnetic one for the back of our phones for quick access. We have our, whoop, sorry. We have our double chargers for our phones while we're driving. This is one of the rare defenders with AC and seat heated, which is pretty insane. So you can see right here, uh, defenders are usually very manual. This one being a 2012 model is a bit more uh, automatic, has more sensors, I mean, more electronics. And the gearbox is standard. I mean, low, neutral, high, diff lock. And on this side here, we have the thermometer. So it tells us uh, temperature inside and outside. Uh, doesn't work very well. I think I'll have to change it one day, but that's about it. Oh, and for the heat exchanger, so the hot shower system, we actually have here the monitor. So when I turn this on, as you can see, it tells me the water now is at 25 Celsius. And uh, the idea is to turn this on while you're driving. It'll heat up the coolant of the vehicle, heat up the water tank. And when it reaches around 38, 39 Celsius, we turn it off and it will close the valve. So the coolant will stop circulating into the water tank. And that way the water will not reach 60 Celsius. And then when we take a shower, we burn ourselves. So this is perfect, especially now that we're at the beach, we don't turn it on because we want fresh water. So if you do install a heat exchanger, install like a opening valve so that the water is not always heating up. Um, that's about it. Let's go to the back. All right, let's go to interior. The whole exterior is done. If I forgot something, uh, please just leave a comment and we'll get back to you. Now, looking at the interior, we have this little carpet that we use, uh, perfect for before you get into the car, because it's such a small car, probably three meters squared in there, living in two with Mathilde. Uh, 
makes it easier to keep it clean. We have another table here that opens. A very basic idea, but using an elastic thread, we can put uh, these paper towels, and that's it. So this is a much lower table. Mathilde actually prefers it here because it's much lower. Uh, the only problem is that it kind of obstructs the entrance, but this is the second solution. So we have three tables, technically, that we can use uh, to sit at or cook at. And it's very easy and fast. Uh, this is all the toiletries, so Mathilde's side, Nick's side. This is personal bags. Usually we put chargers or other uh, personal equipment. First aid kit, this is the small one. And we have the big first aid kit right here. Uh, but we'll show you that inside. Okay, welcome into the Albatross. Uh, all aluminum built. So. Here are my shoes. This is where I have my shoes. Mathilde has her shoes here on the left. This is where we keep all of our food. And this is where Mathilde has her clothes. And these are my clothes. So we have everything we have everything pretty compact. This here is a pull-out table. All of this is built by Xtech, a German company as well. Uh, this is a 2014 model build. Uh, their new models are probably a bit different and maybe better um, but this one works perfectly fine for us cutleries and a few extra uh, bits and pieces that we keep in the vehicle so this is sort of the inside setup with all these aluminium parts we have up here a sink so if you want to step in here so this is a sink that goes with the shower tank below and uh, when the water is heated it's heated uh, up here as well so this is our um, water system so this is our bed this is the old system where you actually have to pull the two wooden planks as you can see there's two of them until more or less until here the idea is that then you step on that couch just below with one foot and get onto the bed uh, our mattress is actually a two-piece mattress that folds this way and so it's very easy to put it in and out the new beds what it is, is that this plank actually comes out till here. Uh, Alucap, for example, does these or other brands as well. x -Tech does them too now. And technically, it goes up with the roof. So the roof, instead of just being this high, will go higher because as you have the bed up here, you will lose head weight, head height. So it will the, the fabric will be longer to let the roof go higher, which is pretty sweet because the bed is always done. Uh, and at the same time, if you look, look at the difference that you have you have a much bigger angle, much more space here. That for us, it kind of cuts that part. Anyways, that's one of the things we changed, but see, it's very few. We're very happy with this setup. Now, this was the cabinet that uh, we saw from outside with the electronics. This here is the fridge. It's an angle uh, fridge. It also does freezer. It works very well. It takes very little power. Very happy about these. Um, in here, we actually keep all of our spare parts in here. So, I'll put this down, pull this out. And if you look in here, it's all of our spare parts. Regarding spare parts, uh, you can find everything on Patreon. Uh, the whole list of spare parts we have and what we recommend for a world tour. Technically, it's just usage parts. We don't have any big parts, just parts that mostly break during the trip and that I can change myself. Here is also from Mud Stuff, along with the nets up here, it's all Mud Stuff. Uh, we have our two backpacks up here. This is um, our pajamas from my side, Mathilde's pajamas and her iPad. Uh, we have a fan, very useful. Uh, our fan is from Claymore. I think it, I don't know if it's Canadian or American, but very useful for Central America. Uh, fruit bag avocados bags, whatever you can think of. Uh, this is the second solar panel we were talking to you about from Sunware. This is a plug and play, so we plug it into the front, set it up in the sun, and at least we have 200 solar with the roof on this one. Now, what else can I show you? Right, one thing that's pretty sweet, so I'm gonna step out. 
<laughs> Love's still the roar. The fluff is back there. Um, one thing that's pretty sweet is, so this is a mosquito net for when the roof is open, but if I remove the floor here, as you can see, there's a part on the floor that is removable. So this floor part is actually an extended bed, which I can set up here using this metal pole. And the idea is that two people can sleep below. So if there's too much wind, we can keep the roof closed, sleep below. Or if we have guests, they sleep below, we sleep above. Uh, but it does have a second purpose being, see these two holes here, here and here. We have the same on the other side with this little, uh, with this little hook area and we can set up then the table that way. So it connects to the vehicle with a strap that holds onto this little hook. And then we have an exterior table on either side. So either awning side or the other side. That's about it, I think. I kind of showed everything for the interior. Did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. Right. Now moving on to the engine bay, which is the final part. So with the bag, it does have an extra little weight, but nothing too serious. In the engine, this is a 2.2 Puma, as I said earlier. Nothing uh, much, not much has been changed except for intercooler to turbo pipes uh, and return. So those pipes have been changed for five ply silicon. We changed as well the intercooler. So now it's a bigger intercooler to reduce heat and accept more uh, airflow. Um, that's about it. We actually didn't do much in terms of the engine. And if you can see over here, this is the heat exchanger system that I was talking to you about. So now instead of just one hose going down, it's been cut into two hoses and it goes under the car chassis and into our car uh, shower tank. And here in there, there's also that valve that I was talking about that opens and closes when I hit the button so that it's not always heating up our, our water. Now, one thing about this uh, albatross, it doesn't leak. A lot of the fenders leak, and it's a good joke around the fenders that if it leaks, you have oil. If it doesn't leak, you have no oil. Ours doesn't leak, so we might have no oil since a year and more, but we're very lucky that there's no leak so far. Um, we did change the transfer case, refurbished it before the departure. Uh, but apart from that, everything else is original and uh, so far so good, fingers crossed. The final thing is uh, the diesel particle filter, so the DPF. If you have a Defender from, I believe, 2012 onwards, so the TD4 2.2 uh, or even the 2.4, I believe, you have a catalyst, which is right here. So we have a catalyst, which is right here, which is this whole big system that's from below to here and the idea is that uh, we did not remap our engine because we wanted to preserve the, the engine for the whole trip but we've just ordered a reprogram from uh, Bass 2 which is going to remove the DPF because our light keeps turning on during this trip because of bad diesel in Central and South America and within four months it turned on twice which is a lot so normally in Europe they'll turn on once every two years so we will put a straight pipe and remove it. If you're doing a trip like this, uh, you might consider that or getting an older Defender that doesn't have diesel particle filter. But honestly, our car had had no problem at all. So you can still go for a TD4. The only thing is maybe put a straight pipe and reprogram the engine with a straight pipe instead of a diesel filter. Uh, we are going to be increasing the power from 120 horsepower to 170 horsepower. Every Overlander that we've talked to uh, that you may know. I'm not going to cite their names, but uh, they've also done that same remap. So us overlanders were all following that same company to do the same remapping uh, because it works. And so we will be doing the same, even though at first we didn't want to. Now, the setup of the car fits exactly the way we like to travel. Uh, we're very happy with the setup, but obviously, like we said in the beginning of the video, there's a few little things that we would have changed. Um, so the first thing was the bed, as we showed you, it would have been awesome if it, the bed could lift with the roof. Um, so that's the first. And the second is since we don't have a roof rack, it would be amazing to have extra storage. So we did get that uh, bag on the hood, 
but there's also these two great storages that can actually fit right here so if we look below here there is a chassis in the front so between this bar and the front bar there is a whole space here and so technically we have a friend who builds these uh, metallic waterproof sandproof seal proof boxes that fit on each side and that would be the next installation for albatross if we can get a hand on them because they are all the way in belgium but um that would be the last installation and i think we would be pretty much set so if you're looking to also build your own overlanding vehicle being a defender or something else uh, there's tons of products out there this video is not sponsored by anyone but we do have uh, multiple partners that are supporting us during the trip and for all these partners we actually asked them to give us a discount code that we could give off to anyone who's interested or is following us so if you are interested and you'd like to save a few euros or check what the products are head on to our website it's in the description box right below so get to our website go under the partners tab and there you'll get the whole list of all the partners and the different coupons or codes or links so if you're looking to build your car don't hesitate also to ask in your comment section below any questions you have we'll be happy to answer them and uh, hope you enjoy the car tour we still have a lot of countries to do we still have South America to finish followed by Australia next year February or March then all of Asia, sorry, from Indonesia all the way until more or less Iran or Central Asia. And then we will go from Egypt all the way to South Africa and back. So some more or less as the plan. Plans change all the time, but we still have a lot to go. So far so good. Security wise has been good. Car has been good. And everything is great. So if you have any questions on the vehicle, this is our full setup. Uh, roof rack in terms of roof rack we might get one for africa or australia as we might need a second spare tire but that's the only reason we would get a roof rack just for that second spare tire i think everything fits and this bag here really makes a difference because we needed that extra storage space so anyway thank you very much if you like the video hit the like button uh, and if you have any questions don't hesitate we'll be happy to help and if you're on the road let us know and hopefully we'll meet you there Take care, guys.